fear keeps me alive. I'm a scared man, scared all the time. Scariest moment of my life happened to me about a year ago. I'm hiking a mountain all by myself. You're not supposed to do that. Uh, they say it can be dangerous. I never really believed them until this fateful day. Uh, I'm halfway up a mountain on a fire access road. Nobody else out there except me. It's a perfect day. And I come around the corner, and I come face to face with a bobcat, and my soul took a shit. <laughs> That's when you know you're scared when you poop your metaphysical pants. <laughs> Because this bobcat wasn't phased by my presence, just had this look in his eye like, yeah, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> so I scurry home, and I call a friend of mine. He's kind of a man's man, right? I was like, dude, scary small in my life. I saw a bobcat on the mountain today. He goes, oh, one of those little things? You can shake it off your leg like a dog. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> shake a beast born onto the mountain <laughs> off your leg like a chihuahua trying to get his rocks off on your shin? I don't think so, buddy. <laughs> I needed validation as a man, so I called another friend of mine. I was like, dude, I saw this bobcat today. Had this look in his eye like, what are you going to do about it? He goes, oh, yeah, my house cat has that same look. <laughs> oh, really? Your house cat has the same look in his eye that a bobcat does? I don't think so, buddy. Let me tell you the difference in cat when it comes to house and bob, okay? <laughs> house right now is chilling on a windowsill, looking to catch a lazy nap, maybe seeking out a hot pipe under the hardwood floor. Bob's off the grid, okay? <laughs> Don't call him Robert, hasn't seen his family in years. No time for two syllables when you're surviving on the mountain. You had house's nuts clip when he was eight months old because you didn't want him making strays or spraying sweaters when he got older. Try to get a knife near Bob's potato sack and see what happens to you. You better walk into that fight equipped with Zeus's lightning bolt and some leather working tools. That satchel's been tanning in the sun for years. Durable, pliable, like a catcher's mitt in Cooperstown. You feed house salmon out of a can that you buy for it, put into a porcelain dish, and when it's finished eating, it makes its waste in a box with scented rocks. <laughs> Bob catches a bird mid-flight in his claws, eats that bird alive, and then shits a spinal cord. <laughs> He's got blood under his nails and a story to tell. <laughs> house right now is high on catnip, chasing a laser pointer around the room. Listening to Dark Side of the Moon by Floyd. Meanwhile, Bob's writing a manifesto about the redistribution of wealth by candlelight. <laughs> out of rabbit bones, he somehow figured out how to melt down with a piece of a twitching bird brain in his beard. So do they have the same look in their eyes? I declare they do not, you dumb son of a bitch. The honorable gentleman from Southern Ohio says, Nay! Nay, 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 they do not have that same look. So I said, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> well, Bob, if I can call you that, I'm going to gently back down this mountain, a.k.a. your living room, <laughs> as quickly as I can, but don't be too mad if I'm not too fast, because about nine years ago, I made love on a pool table. My knees have been jacked up ever since. <laughs> it looks sexy, Bobby, but it ain't. <laughs> so I'm going to take these bulky pool table boning knees down this mountain. And I'm going to go buy some new underpants. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do, Bobby. Maybe go to a Target after summer clearance rack sale. <laughs> buy a breathable tank top for next year. <laughs> Good to be living. I hope we connect here tonight. That's my goal as a performer is to make a, a genuine connection with my audience. Um, they say the key to connection is vulnerability. I heard that in a TED Talk, so I believed it. Uh, <laughs> If it's in a TED Talk, I believe it. I got blind faith in TED Talks. I stopped believing in God about nine years ago. I filled that hole with TED Talks. <laughs> it's the behavior of a dumb person to believe something you think a smart person says, and that's why I do it, because I'm a dummy. But if a dude has glasses and a beard, he's wearing khaki pants with a button down, tucked into those khakis with no belt on, I'll believe whatever that dude says. <laughs> Who's got time for belts? He's busy reading. Is that Velcro on his shoes? I bet he's a genius. There's got to be a vetting process to give a TED Talk. You can't just walk off the street and give one. You have to be one of the smartest people on the planet. There's got to be some kind of educational obstacle course one must go through. Oh, you think you're smart enough to give a TED Talk? Well, step into the intellectual octagon. <laughs> Can you tell me the difference between a malt and a milkshake? Because <laughs> I sure don't know. Come and give a TED Talk. Can you get out of Chinese handcuffs all by your goddamn self? Oh, come and give a TED Talk, man. Can you tell me why she couldn't fall in love with me? 
Maybe you could give a TED Talk. <laughs> and it's okay, some jokes in sad. Because sometimes life is sad, and that's okay, too. I'd rather be alive and sad than dead and happy. <laughs> it makes perfect sense in my brain. <laughs> Hope you've had your heart broken. Uh, I'm not saying that because I'm a jerk. I'm saying it because I think it teaches us a valuable lesson in life that we don't always get what we want. Uh, it took me way too long to learn that. Two big heartbreaks in my life. The last one was about a year and a half ago. I don't know if you've ever been so heartbroken you've considered kidnapping someone before. <laughs> <laughs> Just me? Okay. Well, that's a new level of heartbreak for my ass. My ex-girlfriend came to visit me out here on the West Coast, and she lives on the East Coast and doesn't know anybody else out here except for me. And that's an important part of the story. <laughs> and after a long, fun weekend, I'm driving her back to the airport. We're getting closer and closer to the exit. I didn't want the weekend then. Frankly, I didn't want the relationship then. I look at her while I'm driving. I actually had this thought pop into my head. I could just keep her. <laughs> But here's the messed up part. My next thought wasn't, well, that's a weird thing to think for the first time. <laughs> My next thought genuinely was, she'll grow to love us. <laughs> Who the hell is us? <laughs> you get so heartbroken, you turn into a cartoon villain. Shit, I understand Gargamel now. He probably wasn't such a bad dude. Those Smurfs were probably just comfort food. 